how to deal with a bad conscience, when you know you're the one in the wrong. You're supposed to feel that way so that you're less likely to do something like that again. It'll pass. Just like with everything else give it time. Well you can also take actionable steps to make up for whatever it is you did. But ultimately it really depends on what you did. What helps me is to realize that it's in the past. And feeling bad about it now won't change anything. And then I focus my energy on more important things. Like making sure that it doesn't happen again. These things take time. Use your guilt to motivate you to do slash be better going forward. Forgive underscore yourself. Life is a constant learning experience. Your actions show that you've clearly learned. Now it's time to reset and move on. So that you can meet future challenges as your best and healthiest self. You are supposed to feel that way. Accept it. Learn from your mistakes semicolon become a better person as a result. How would you treat your best friend or your partner if they had done the same as you? That's probably how you should treat yourself. Takes time. Learn though. A. It is remarkably easy to be decent. Like extremely easy. It will take time for you to feel better. If I can give one piece of advice slash don't let it become the friend's problem. They were hurt. But have moved on. Trying to make yourself feel better by continually trying to make it up to them can actually be more hurtful. Learn from my mistakes. LOL. You have to accept that you are capable of such actions and that the person you are in that moment is a part of your total identity. Having an intense inner struggle like the one you're having from this type of situation typically stems from not fully integrating the darker aspects of the self. It is true that you are capable of such actions and it is also true that you deserve unconditional self-acceptance all the same. They used to be obsessed about something or someone but now they feel cringe thinking about it? You are just like MJ. Lol when I read the title I immediately thought about MJ. Feeling cringe about past obsessions is quite healthy I would say. It's not okay to compulsively think or care about someone else. Tastes change as you age. You mature and get other interests. Don't be too hard on your younger self. If you don't learn as you live. You are not good company. What's one stereotype women give men that annoys you? Just that we have to spend the first month or so proving we're not gonna rape. Abduct and murder them. Like there's this assumption we're all awful and have this uphill battle to prove otherwise. While women enjoy pretty much the exact opposite. No human empathy. As in they don't care for a stranger's feelings. Or are rude in public to people who are literally serving them with something they're buying or eating. Just have respect for those people. Everyone is human. Why should someone have attitude for no just reason? That men have it easier than women and that men are directly in control and beneficiaries of patriarchy. Men have their own weird challenges. The society as a mindless whole has put men in patriarchal position. How come that's a different debate? Now that we are here. Some men enjoy ridiculous power but the common man also suffers a lot more. Men's problems have no comparison to women's miseries. And discussing men's issues does not mean downplaying women's or any gender minorities issues. It only means helping men. That we don't need to be reassured. Held. Hugged. Or any other sort of verbal or non-verbal affection. We are strong. Tough and confident. Until we are not. We are taught that affection leads to sex. But that's usually because that's when we get that kind of affection. It's a prelude to sex. My wife gets this. But I'm in my 50s and we've been together for almost 30 years. Hug your man and let him know he's appreciated and enough. That we are all selfish pigs. Or that our lives are easy. I also saw some women on her a couple months back saying Andrew Tate has ruined men for her. Because every guy she knew was obsessed with him. Trust me not every guy likes him I honestly think I hate that motherfucker more than most women do. Do you think it's true that intelligent people tend to be less happy? Why do you think that is? What evidence is there for this? I mean real scientific evidence. Not anecdotal evidence or guesses or assumptions. I would imagine that there is a positive correlation between intelligence and happiness. If happiness is defined as satisfaction and comfort with one's life. Why? Because there is probably a positive correlation between intelligence and financial success. And when you have less financial worry and more financial security. Trust me you will be more satisfied and content with your life. I've always thought that the most successful people probably aren't the smartest. They're not smart enough to give up when other people tell them to. The one thing that makes a person successful more than anything else is persistence. Smart people often have a problem with that. Absolutely not. Most of the truly happy people I know are the most highly intelligent. But I do think that there is a certain line of depressive thought. That I was also very prone to before a lot of therapy. That makes you feel that you are feeling so negative about people in life because you just know more. It's like you can see things others can't. And while that is true in a way. It doesn't make it true. But it's part of what makes being depressed so seductive, you know that to get better you will have to give up that feeling that you just get something essential and important about existing that others don't know. I have a friend that's really intelligent. She has good grades. Can talk about any subject that comes up in a conversation and just has a lot of general knowledge. When something doesn't go the way she really wants it to. Like she gets one bad grade. She tends to get extremely disappointed in herself. She'll study like crazy. Feel like everyone judges her and basically ignore her own needs. She feels like she has this reputation or standard to uphold and that makes her unhappy once in a while. What computer feature don't most people know about? Windows key plus shift plus s for immediate snipping tool that saves to your clipboard. 
Control plus Shift plus Windows plus B for soft graphic driver reset. Good for when you plug your laptop into a dock and it doesn't hook the monitors correctly. Saves you having to open slash close the lid or unplug slash replug sometimes. One I've not seen mentioned is Control plus Space bar on highlighted text. Reverts all the text formatting to the default. Great for when you copy text into an email slash document with different formatting slash font slash text sizes etc. Also there is a feature in Word where you can change text from all caps into sentence case slash lower case. Saves having to retype if caps lock is accidentally left on. Alt plus to go back and forth, instead of the arrows that is at the top left. And if you choose something and press shift and click something far it well select the things in between. Control can make you choose multiple items with gaps between them. Sorry for my poor choice of words. English is not my first language. I was shocked to find out how many people don't know about alt tab. People at work saying they can't work without two to three monitors because switching windows is just so hard. And I was like why don't you just alt tab. And I had a sea of confused faces. Using the trackpad on Mac fully. Two fingers to scroll up and down. Two fingers left or right to go forwards and backwards on the web. Four fingers left or right to switch workspaces. Four fingers up to show all windows and workspaces open. Pinch to zoom or double tap with two fingers to smart zoom. Three finger drag to highlight text. This one was default at some point on OS X. Now you have to set it up yourself but it's so useful that it's a must. Four fingers outward to move everything out of the way and show desktop.